All right, so what is this sap, amber sticky stuff on my branches? Let's talk about that next. everyone, this is Dwayne with Edge of Nowhere Farm and we're coming to you here today with a, well, what do I do with the stuff on my tree episode? <laughs> so you guys know we've got over 170 fruit trees here on the farm and all of them are under two years old. The tree that we're gonna be working with today is dealing with gumosis. This tree is our burgundy plum tree. It's been in the ground now for just under two years. We're here in October. It went in the ground in April of 2020, so just over a year and a half ago. And we walked by it the other day and noticed that something wasn't quite right. That's usually the telltale sign of something like gumosis. And what that was, was a dying branch. So if you see your tree, um, healthy otherwise and then all of a sudden you've got a dead branch that's usually an indication that you have something going on now that can be broken branches it can be some type of infestation uh, it could be a lot of different things in this case we learned very quickly that what we were dealing with is gumosis we'll get in here nice and tight you'll be able to see this hopefully you can pick it up on camera but if you've seen sap off of a tree it's the exact same stuff it's sap we've got it running all up and down this branch now this branch back here this is the dead one so this is what originally alerted us to the fact that something was definitely wrong and the gumosis is basically all around this part of the branch right here now i don't see it on the rest of the tree which is pretty common but i've never seen this much sap on one of our trees. Now, gumosis is very common in your stone fruit, particularly in plums and apricots, things like that. This being a plum tree, it's not really surprising. We've seen it on our apricot trees before as well, but never to this extent. So clearly something is different with this particular tree. Now, as far as causes, you guys can look that up. It could be a whole slew of things from some type of fungus uh, to you know just a woodpecker or some type of wood boring insect. The fungus, while that's a possibility, I'm doubting that's the issue that we have here in Arizona. While we have had some rain, it hasn't been much, and we are very, very dry. So it's very common that we are 10, 15% humidity. Today we're gonna be about 20, that's very common as well. So while it could be fungus this far up off the ground, with a dry, dry tree otherwise, it's doubtful. Now, as far as damage to the tree itself, some other way, that's very, very possible. And the fact that this tree is just growing so rapidly could be an issue as well because it does have a tendency to split from time to time. And that's kind of what I'm seeing. Let's talk a little bit about what we're gonna do as far as getting these off and whether or not we need to remove one of these branches. What we're gonna be utilizing today primarily is gonna to be tools that you would find elsewhere on the farm. Now, one thing about this tree, I don't know for sure what's causing that gamosis. The fact that it's only on one branch and down towards the trunk on that side could mean that we just had a woodpecker or something like that just go into town in there. I know we had a nest, a bird's nest in there at one point. So I'm thinking that's probably what caused it. However, because I don't know whether or not it is some type of fungus, I'm gonna be utilizing tools that we typically wouldn't use on a tree, mainly because I don't want cross-contamination and because these are easier to use. <laughs> so I've just got a screwdriver that I'm gonna to use to try to pry the sap, the hardened sap off the tree. I'll come back behind that if necessary and use a file just to make sure I don't have any additional damage to the trunk. Uh, or anything else that's going on there, um, just to make sure it's all off the tree. I am gonna be wearing gloves, just these uh, neutral gloves that are disposable. Obviously, sap is very, very sticky. This will help to keep that off my fingers. And again, back to if there's an issue with the fungus, we don't want that either. I am gonna utilize a scrap piece of cardboard here. That's where I'm gonna be putting all of the sap. I don't want that on the ground around the tree, again, 
just to make sure that we're not dealing with a fungus. And then last but not least, we're gonna be utilizing the Ivy Organics Whitewash uh, Repellent. So this is a whitewash for the trunk. In fact, I'll go ahead and link the video here where we showed you how we utilize this as an organic tree trunk protectant, not only for sun damage, but also for certain types of insects and rodents. So just in case I'm dealing with that here on this tree, it'll at least keep them away from the area that we're working on today and help to seal some of the cuts that we're gonna be making here while we're still in our fall flush period and could wind up having plenty of sap coming out of these cuts. Now along the lines of cuts, we did look at the branch and I think the easiest thing for us is gonna to be to take off a good portion of the branch before we actually start peeling sap off of the tree. This particular branch we normally wouldn't touch until winter time, but because I don't know what's causing this and I don't want this to continue, we need to kind of keep an eye to see if it's going to try to spread. We're gonna go ahead and remove a large portion of this branch and then start removing some of the actual sap. Now you can see what we are dealing with here as far as the gamosis. It's actually pretty extensive. This is the dried branch that we saw that was obvious. You can see that it was basically completely cut off down here um, by these cuts essentially in the trunk. So figured when we got in there it was worth just taking this whole branch off and one of the things I should probably mention I did use our regular loppers so I'll make sure to utilize isopropyl alcohol, which we typically do anyway, but just to make sure before I put this back up in storage that I don't have anything as far as fungus on here that I would be able to transfer to another tree. But I wanted to show you that so you can see just how nasty that stuff can look. Okay, now what we're gonna do is head back to the tree with what's left over and start taking the rest of the sap off of the tree and see how we're looking. See, it'll just... Off. We'll just have to get, and then it should just stick to this cardboard. Good catch, huh? I don't see any like holes or anything. Okay, we were in there. I took a little bit more of this branch off, and as we were going in here, Lori saw it pretty easily. It looks like the tree actually partially split right here at some point in time, which is what caused the injury that allowed the sap to come in here and basically start pushing through the outside of the bark. It was pretty clear as we came in, you can really kind of see where that happened. So we have all of the sap removed. We've taken a lot of the damaged bark off. We've done that through here. We're gonna scrape this up a little bit more and then what we're gonna do is go ahead and put the Ivy Organics whitewash and protectant on this injury as well. And we'll kind of see how this goes uh, as we go into the dormant season here this year. So what we did was we went ahead and put this Ivy Organics um, repellent, kind of repair too, I'm thinking, in the entire area that we scraped back on this tree that looked like it had some damage. Now you can see the cut here, so we have that sealed with this, and then of course everything here in the center of this one side of the tree, which is where we had that damage. So now, whether or not this is fungal, I still don't know. What I like about this and why I wanted to utilize this here is this has some essential oils in there, all organic by the way, but it has some essential oils in there, two ingredients in particular, clove oil and spearmint, both of which I know are antifungals. There's also some rosemary in here too that I like for that as well. But if there is a fungal issue here, this should have taken care of that for us in 100% natural and organic. So at this point, I guess the only thing to see is whether or not this spreads and or comes back. Hey everyone, real quick, we were so impressed with this product that we reached out to Ivy Organics and they actually gave us a discount code for you guys. So the discount code, if you guys wanna try this out, is Eon Farm, so E-O-N, farm 
you can use that. I'll leave a link to the website down below. That gets you 10% off of anything that you purchase. So again, that discount code is E-O-N-F-A-R-M, so Eon Farm. Use that discount code for 10% off anything you buy from the guys at Ivy Organics. So we've had this question from you guys a couple times in what do you do when you see that sap on trees? Gummosis is typically what you're dealing with. That's really the definition of that. And you can see we were having it here ourselves. Really not too sure why, but it is happening and it's very, very common with some of your stone fruit. So if you see this, this will give you an idea of what you might be able to do in order to take care of that. So just wanna thank you for joining us today. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel. We have a lot of fruit trees here, over 170 fruit trees here on the farm. So fruit trees is one of the things that we're passionate about. If you know anybody that's into this kind of thing, we'd love it if you would share it. It definitely helps us here. Questions or comments, those go straight down below. In our Amazon shop, that's a free, painless way to help support the channel. I'll leave a link down below. You can start there. If you do, it doesn't matter what you buy, you help to support us here. Oh, and one more thing, Ivy Organics, that whitewash that we're using today, I will leave a link down below for that website as well and the YouTube channel so you can take a look at that product as well. So just wanna thank you for joining us today and remind you, if we can farm on the edge of nowhere, so can you.